Welcome to Take It From The Iron Woman. My name is Susanne Müller, your host and the Iron Woman. This podcast is about empowering yourself and others to make real changes in the world. You will hear from everyday, smart, sophisticated, hip people like you and me. Not everybody has to be an Iron Woman to impress the world. Together, we will learn from the sports and business leaders how you can become a more successful person as an entrepreneur or a leader. It's one step at a time, one day at a time. Take your steps now, take your big steps now. Join me on this journey to success. Take it from the Iron Woman. Only special guest. Today we go to Mariana. She is a Brazilian artist, illustrator and toy designer. Let's hear from her. Introduce yourself. Welcome, Mariana. I'm happy that we can talk today. Hi, thank you. I'm so glad to be here. Thanks for inviting me. My name is Mariana. I'm an illustrator and artist. I live in New York City today, originally from Brazil. I've been living here for the past 10 years. Tell us about yourself, your journey, and how did it come about with your cute toys and what are they called? I started creating toys a while ago, since 2008. Everything started for fun. I started sewing because my mom, my grandmother, both my grandmothers are seamstress. I have like a lot of seamstress in my family. Mm. And that kind of sparkled me to learn a little bit. I don't know how to sew clothes, but I know how to sew little toys. At the time, 2008 was like a very cold designer toys toy art was kind of very famous people were like kid robots like some brands that were very famous back in the days and I really liked that idea of having like a toy that I always like to I really like kid stuff for some reason I think it's fun I think it's whimsical and I always bring like good memories I felt like it's a good kind of medium to actually work with I started creating my own toys, uh, made of flush and different materials, sometimes cotton or felt. And I have two of my other friends that we would get together and just hang out and create ca characters and sometimes have some fairs and bazaars, but uh, only for fun, nothing thinking anything about a brand or anything big, just for fun. I was in college at that time. Then I college, I was in my major in visual arts, and I came to United States. I was working as a graphic designer in Brazil, and I came as a au pair <laughs> and as an exchange program. And it took me a while until I got to learn the language and the culture and try to actually survive in New York City, <laughs> all this stuff. I kind of put a little bit of a pause on my project. And 10 years after that, I kind of returned with my own brand. So I decided to mm. go back to my toys. And now that I've been illustrating more and kind of kind of found a little bit of my groove and like how my characters look like. And I started drawing again and traveling. This is one of my other passions, travel. I wish I could do it more mm. often, but I tried to travel at least once a year like a big trip or twice and then if of course if the pandemic everybody stopped doing stuff but I tried to take pictures of places I've been and I decided to put my characters on it as well kind of mixing my toys plush toys and illustrations in the places I go I combine my, my trips around the world and in my art all together to bring some inspiration and stories from the places I've been. And hopefully I want to turn this into a, a, a book for kids wow. as well. <laughs> Seems like a big project. And your toys are called Drools? Drools, yes. Drools. The reason why I call them Drools, I noticed like I was seeing some work that I've done since college back in the days. And for some reason, I always make them with like big eyes and I always like drooling mouths and stuff. 
oh, this is like a characteristic of my drawings and they're always drooling. Mm. So maybe when I was looking for a name, I thought like, I think drools would be a great name because it's a fun name. At the same time, it's very characteristic of, there's like this crazy kind of face that they have that at the same time is kind of fun. It's kind of like almost like a drooling of so much happiness. <laughs> And you said it whimsical. When I think of drools, I'm like, okay, it's drooling, but it's also something fun. And if it's a toy, you can have it in many different facets. Yes, definitely. You said you're in your family, you have seamstresses, so you how to draw and I the draw, draw. And so I admire you because I cannot do needlework, but I cannot mm -hmm. do sewing. I don't have the patience. How do you develop that patience and passion probably, right? <laughs> the sewing part is actually my favorite part, but there's a lot of parts to the creation. I first draw the, the toy, then I make like a shape of it and I draw on the fabric, cut the fabric, mount, and then some parts I sew by hand, like the eyes, sometimes It's easier. And then I go to the sewing machine. The sewing machine part is my favorite part. I love the noise of it. it kind of reminds me a lot of Brazil. Like my grandmother, she sews. She's still sold to today. She's actually so close to people. So because in Brazil, we have, um, we are old school. <laughs> I think now this is kind of disappearing, like uh, fast fashion. But people used to buy magazines and bring the the outfit to my grandmother, she would take the measurements and make exactly the same mm -hmm. shape with the fabric the person wanted. I always envy that. I always, I, I wish I, I was able to do it. Last time I was there, she kind of taught me how to make a dress, but it's hard and we'll see. Next time I'll try to take a class for how to make my own clothes because I think that's so cool. Maybe like I can draw some <laughs> drools, <laughs> fabric and make my own line of clothes i think it's it's very cool to know how to do that as well i know basic i know the basics but i really like it i really like to do it because it reminds me of my family back there and then each tool is unique in a way you mass produce <laughs> how does that work no i'm trying to i mean most of my toys the kitchen sometimes i repeat them but most of my toys they are unique I kind of like, I don't like to repeat them. If people ask, oh, can you do this one? Because I really like it and another color or something, I'll do it. But most of the time, I kind of, I like to create new ones. Because it just, it just make it, the process more fun. And I thought about as well, like, oh, maybe I should produce. Because it is a lot of work. And when I go to fairs and, and stuff like that, I understand some people probably see it's like, oh my God, it's, I mean, I don't consider my work too expensive because I also want to make it easy for people to have it as well. I don't, I, but I, at the same time, it's not made in, you know, in China, it's not mass produced. <laughs> And <laughs> it's, it's a lot of work. It takes me five days to make one. I like to make it one of a kind. That's the whole process. Uh, And I, I have to be, to keep doing that. And if one day I decide to mass, no, I, would, I wouldn't say mass produce, but make it my life easier maybe to have other people working with it i would love to work with like maybe have a community in brazil that actually makes mm. that in brazil and help some help a community um help have a small business like that i don't think i'll ever mass produce it's not yeah. my type and mass produce sounds like as you said made in china and a hundred thousand or a million of the same what i've seen from your instagram It seems like it takes no time because the video goes so fast, but you say it's five yeah. days. It's really a, a special bond that you create with the jewels. And that should be the same for the person who buys that toy for somebody special. Exactly. That's yeah. the whole, that's the whole yeah. goal. And to like have a special gift. <laughs> and the picture you have, let's say I saw a picture of the Notre Dame and then you have The, the drool on it so these are photographies and these are also unique or how do you produce that so the photos i sometimes make more than one copy mm -hmm. i also don't want to make too many of them i want to keep it like in a series of maybe 50 or 100 once i get to that point like 50 i'll stop and, and make more 
but the illustrations I print more than like I try to keep it very unique as well, like a very short print. I want to say like it's not short print. The word is like a no. Well, there's a word for that, like a series of printing. But when you have a, a number on each print, I think that's really great. How and where do you sell your products? Your art. I want to say sorry. I don't want to say products. No, it's the same. <laughs> well, now I've been doing a lot of uh, fairs, craft fairs in New York because it's like nice weather. But I'm also making like a, an Etsy store for the moment. But I and also want to make a, like an online shop with my my actual brand name. But I'm gonna start with with Etsy first. I'm about to have a baby, so I, I want to kind of make it things easier now, <laughs> and then I'll go back like more. Like harder once I'm a little like, kind of used to my new life but soon I'm gonna launch my Etsy store and also you can find me on Instagram I always can DM me and ask the, ask for any toys and I can I send it out to the world <laughs> wow, this is really cool and before we recorded you said you want to put the book together how can we support you and what is your vision my idea is to kind of tell kids the importance of traveling and kind of having them curious about the world since early age. Also, I feel like what I want to do in the future is have every character have your own passport. <laughs> Maybe if you buy a character and you bring the character everywhere you go, take a picture with him, stamp his passport somewhere, like if you go to Italy <laughs> or any other place, if you go to your grandparents' house, like have a type of a character that you can bring around and be your your body i feel like i have been teach a little bit of a geography for kids in a fun nice way that's really cool teach geography while they are traveling and realizing where they're going yeah. that's a great that would be amazing right? it's the best way to learn and now you said you're gonna have a baby soon where will you be traveling with the baby or where would you like to go <laughs> next <laughs> Well, I'm about to go to Greece in September, still without a baby. She'll be in my belly. But then the first trip will probably be Brazil to to meet all my family. Because mm -hmm. everybody's, all my family is in probably will be Brazil, her first trip. And hopefully other places too. Hopefully she'll be an easy kid to traveling around. <laughs> I think she will, since you're loving the traveling Why not that the baby is also fond of traveling? <laughs> Introduce the illustrations to her. Okay, so the monsters are going. So you should yeah, go too. show the, the baby now. Hey, this is where we're going. You're part of this. That's a great idea. I wish you good luck. We want to hear once you're in the book publishing industry or somewhere. We want to hear from you, but good luck with everything and take more pictures. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you so much for having me. What a lovely and whimsical conversation, Drools. Follow her, see what she's up to, and see what she's up to next. Take it from the Iron Woman. We have episodes every Monday with interesting people, with creative people, with people out of the ordinary from around the world. And Take It From The Iron Woman is also a book, Global Business Coaching with Sports Parallels. Get it, read it, enjoy it. It's my story, my journey from Switzerland to New York to Kilimanjaro and the Ironman. Thank you for your support and see you next time. Bye-bye.